Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Then they came to Capernaum, and on the Sabbath Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. The people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one, having authority, and not as the scribes. In their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Quiet, come out of him. The unclean spirit convulsed him and with a loud cry came out of him. All were amazed and asked one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. His fame spread everywhere throughout the whole region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Good afternoon, folks. I'm speaking at all the masses this weekend on a very important topic. No, this is not the money talk. Actually, it's something more important than money. I'm talking about health. And I'm talking specifically about the power that you and I have to affect good health in other people through our prayer. St. Greg will be offering <coughs> a Lenten healing mission about six weeks from now. And that will be a special three-day period of intense prayer when we exercise the power that we have to pray for people in our lives who need God's healing touch in one way or another. <coughs> when I was first ordained back in 1968, um, I didn't get a regular parish assignment for three months. Uh, during the summer of 68, the diocese used me to fill in for priests who were on vacation. And that was a great uh, initial experience for me because I got to see all kinds of ministry. In uh, one night in August, I was filling in for the uh, chaplain at um, Niagara Falls Memorial Hospital. I was sound asleep in the chaplain's quarters at 2.30 in the morning and the phone rang, the emergency room operator summoning me to come and give the last rites to a woman who had just been brought in, was not expected to live, she had suffered a heart attack. So I went to the hospital and after I did the anointing I uh, talked to the husband, was obviously distraught because this was a bolt out of the blue, very sudden, and um, we prayed for his wife that she would recover. And then um, after an hour I went home and the next morning I went back to Buffalo because the regular chaplain was back and I never found out what happened uh, to the woman. Fast forward, that was in August, then in the middle of October. Um, then I was assigned to a parish in Niagara Falls, Sacred Heart. And I had only been there a couple of weeks and they were having a parish uh, fall festival, they called it, a big, big dance, dinner dance, you know, type of thing. And I'm uh, walking across the dance hall, and I ran smack into, literally smack into, the guy from the hospital dancing with his wife, dancing up a storm. And he said to me, hey, Father, I guess our prayers worked. <laughs> I said, yeah, I guess they did. Uh, for me as a young priest, that was a very powerful uh, demonstration of the power of prayer. And I, I don't think I need to um, convince you that you have that power because anybody could tell a story like, like that one. I could tell you a lot more stories of healing. Uh, and you probably could too because I think we've all had the experience of praying earnestly and seriously and consistently and having our prayers be answered. What I want to convince you to do is to use that power in the next six weeks to pray for people in your life who need some kind of healing. And I'm going to help you to identify those people 
and I'm going to have give you a prayer that you can say for those people. And this is for everybody. Uh, this is uh, for kids as well as adults. You'll find in the seats a yellow, not yellow, sorry. Um, I'm not colorblind. It's a red, it's kind of a pink red card. Is that salmon? What do you call that color? I don't know. Anyway, you see them in the seats? Uh, they're probably on the end, so just pass them down so everybody has one of these prayer cards and a pencil. You need a prayer card and a pencil. And I'd like everybody to do this, including the uh, children who are here. Everybody gets a prayer card and a pencil. And I'll walk you through this. What you want to do is turn the card over so you're looking at the part where it says my prayer intentions. And you will notice that um, there's eight, six, eight lines there where you can list the people you wish to pray for in the next six weeks. Think first of all who, of people who need a physical healing, people who are in the hospital maybe or recovering from an accident or getting better after surgery, someone who's sick, the flu maybe, or elderly or chronically ill. When we think of healing, we, we probably think first of physical healing. So put the names or the initials of people on the card who need a physical healing. And then think of another kind of a healing um, where it's not so much a physical issue but a mental issue people who might be suffering from uh, mental disorder or emotional disorder, someone maybe who's suffering from depression or from some kind of addiction, put that person's name or that person's initial on your card. Another type of healing is a healing of relationships. Our relationships with the people we share life with sometimes can get bruised, sometimes get lacerated, sometimes fractured or broken. You know this, it's part of life. And um, we wanna ask the Lord to heal relationships that are in need of healing and to show us what part we can play in that healing. So indicate on the card any relationship that you would like to see God to heal. And in that category of relationships, think too of people who need a healing in their relationship with God. I think we all know people who we would love to see closer to God. Put those names there, people who might be in need of a, I guess I would call it a spiritual healing. And finally, uh, there are uh, families, I think, who need healing in a in an economic sense where the finances in the family are not coming together and they need God's healing power to cause that situation to get better for whatever reason. So you might want to be aware of people who are in need of some economic healing and put their name too on the card. Now at the bottom of the card, please note that there are the dates there for the healing mission. Uh, you might want to transfer those dates from the card to your own personal agenda, your date book, March 12th, 13th, and 14th. You have a choice of services at noon or 7 p.m. Services include the Eucharist with a homily um, on some aspect of healing. After Mass, uh, everybody in church is invited to come forward and across the front of the church here we will have several priests and deacons and we will pray individually for people that God would listen to the intentions that you have, the prayers that you have in your heart and on your prayer card. And also after Mass, several priests will be available for the sacrament of penance or reconciliation. You know, too, that the, uh, our speaker for the healing mission is Father Richard Zajac. If you've ever had anything to do with Sisters Hospital in the last 35 years, you know who he is because he's been their chaplain for 35 years. I'll say this about three things you need to know about Father Duke. We call him Duke Zajac. Number one, no priest in our diocese knows more about praying for healing than he does. Number two, 
No priest in our diocese spends more time preparing homilies than he does. His, his general rule is one hour of preparation for every one minute of the homily. So a 12 minute homily, he will have spent 12 hours in preparation. I'm not exaggerating. And it shows, you can tell when you hear him, you know that's well prepared. Third thing, he has published four volumes of his homilies and sermons. So they're, they're good. You will not be disappointed. So if you would, take home this prayer card that you've been writing on. This is your personal prayer card. And also I'd like to ask you to take home a second card, a blank card, and put it in your pocket or your purse because you're going to be meeting someone this week who will be in need of some kind of healing in his or her life. Now, they won't, they won't say, I need a healing. What they'll be doing is complaining, crabbing, you know, and uh, telling you what's wrong in their life. And you can simply say, I will pray that that situation gets better. Easy thing to say. In fact, you pull out the card. This is the prayer I'm going to be saying. We're saying this prayer at St. Greg's for the next several weeks. And you can take a copy and pray along with us. Simplest thing in the world. You've invited someone to pray. You've given them a prayer to say. And also on the card is the information about the healing mission. Then when you come back to church the next Sunday, get another blank card, put it in your pocket or your purse, and wait for God to tell you what to do with it. It works. I'd like to invite you now to join with Father Leon and me as we say together the prayer for healing. Lord Jesus, Jesus you, once you once came, came among, among us to bring, bring wholeness, and wholeness and holiness to all people. people. We ask, we ask you now, you now to, bring to bring your healing, healing presence, presence to us in a, a powerful way. way. As, As your, your healing, healing touch, touch made lepers, lepers whole, touch, touch those, those who are, are ill or injured and restore, and restore them, them to, to good, good health. As, As you, you drove out demons, demons deliver us, us from depression, depression addiction, addiction, and emotional, emotional problems. problems. As, As you bless family, family life at Cana, Bless our families with peace and harmony. Forgive, forgive us our sins and help us to forgive those who have hurt us. Grant us health in mind, body, and soul so that we might become all that you are calling us to be. Use us as effective instruments of your peace, your love, and your healing. We ask this of you, Jesus, our Lord, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you.